Good morning, friends. Today, I thought it'd be nice to invite you to sit on my couch with me and just kind of talk about all of the things that I'm growing in my garden this year. And so specifically, I want to talk about the things that I've started from seeds. So if you're new here and we haven't met yet, hello, my name is Kiera. Feel free to call me Q. And on this channel, I basically just share all of my adventures in gardening. So learning to grow things, learning to grow food, learning to grow flowers, all that good stuff. I am in zone nine in California. And so now is about the time where we're full blown into seed starting season. So a lot of stuff I've started already. And then there's just a few things that I'm still waiting on. And so I thought it'd be cool to just kind of like go over what I'm planning on, mostly because I've been geeking out about this stuff and I want to document it and talk about it because this is a really exciting thing for me. Um, I really love starting things from seeds. I'm not very good at it. My seed game is not very strong, but I love doing it. I love the promise of it. I love just going to the different like garden stores and online and stuff like that and just seeing what the possibilities are and seeing what I could learn to grow. So I'd love to share that with you today. Um, I will also link just a couple of my favorite um, companies to buy seeds from in the description box below so that you can check those out if you do see something here that you like that maybe you wanna grow in your garden as well. So let's get started. Okay, so first of all, um, here's my super fancy um, seed box it is a a cliff bar box from a huge order of cliff bars that we ordered and i'm just reusing it so i really actually like this box because it's huge and you can see in there i have all of my packets of seeds and then things that i've saved on on the other side and i've kind of started to organize them by season and also like what i've planted already and what i still need to get to but this box is really handy. I know a lot of people do their like really beautiful um, photo boxes and I love those, but this is where we're at right now. And so if you just have like a random box that you want to just put seeds in, this is also a newer box to me. So I had a really small one before this. So you don't need all the fancy stuff to just get started. So you can just use whatever's really in your house. Um, and I keep this in a kind of a dark place like in a closet in our house and they it's worked out just fine so anyway I'm gonna come in here and show you a few things so I have a few categories I'm gonna show you the vegetables that I'm planning on doing and then the flowers that I'm planning on doing this year I'm planning to grow a ton more flowers which is really cool a lot of them I've never grown before um, which is really exciting because I wanted to do a, more of a cut flower garden for part of my garden this year and I really just wanted to expand on the garden. We have a brand new garden that we're still building out and it's about three or four times bigger than our last garden which was really small and so we have a lot more planting space and I'm trying to figure out and wrap my head around exactly how many plants to be starting and I'm kind of just starting some and then starting more and starting more and doing it in waves. So this whole thing is a learning process for me. The first thing, the first category that I wanna start with is the vegetables that I've already started. And so again, I might be starting more of these. Some of them I'm still working on like the peppers, um, but I wanna show you kind of like what we are working with so far. Okay, so as far as the peppers that I started from seed, um, peppers are one of those things where I love growing them and I'm really bad at growing them. <laughs> For some reason, I love the idea of figuring them out and I've had some success. Like we've been able to grow a lot of them from seed. I think last year we grew, the last two years, I grew all of the peppers that we had from seeds. Um, but by no means do I have great germination rates or any of that kind of stuff. I'm still testing out what are the best, me best methods that work for me and all of that kind of stuff. So um, the first two that I wanna share are the Craig's Grande Jalapeno. Um, this is from Baker Creek. This is actually the easiest pepper that I grow. So it has the best germination rate. It comes up the fastest. 
Uh, the last two years in a row, these actually germinated quicker than any of the other peppers that we started. This one kind of feels like a reward to me because you're waiting so long for peppers to come up. You think that they're not going to, and just when I'm about to kind of worry and potentially give up, these pop up. And so it kind of gives me hope for the rest of them. So we really like these. Um, these are for my husband. I grow a couple hot peppers for him. I don't personally eat them, but I am happy to grow them for him. The next one is a poblano, also from Baker Creek. Um, this one's really good too. So we only had a couple of these come up last year. Again, I'm working on just figuring out how to start all of these things and stuff like that. But um, this one was a really good one too. So other peppers that we're starting that I don't have seeds for here, they're because I've actually saved seeds from previous years from like farmer's market peppers and peppers that we grew before and all of that kind of stuff. And some of them do well and some of them don't. Some of the ones that I really like are um, Italian peppers. Like I really like getting the big red Italian peppers. Andrew's a really good cook. And so we can go through a lot of peppers. And so I love growing the it's sweet peppers. Um, our favorites, which I don't have the seeds for right now. I'm still waiting on them because we just ordered them, were habanadas. And so they are like a habanero. So they have that peach flavor, but they don't have any of the heat. So they taste really like maybe not peach it's really like fruity and tropical which they're really really good and i love them and i had saved some seeds from those and none of them germinated <laughs> and so um we went on baker creek we bought another seed packet and i am anxiously waiting for those to come in and then some other ones that we have we grow like red bell peppers and like all of that kind of stuff um, for most bell peppers they actually like a green bell pepper and a red bell pepper they're usually the same thing just at different stages so um, a lot of bell peppers a lot of italian peppers you can eat them green and then they might turn like yellow or orange and then red and so that's kind of the life cycle of them and you just kind of pick them at whatever stage you want and for me i love waiting until they get to that kind of like last color because i think that's when they taste the best and there are some like purple varieties like more sakis we've grown before we just aren't actually doing them this year, but there are a lot of different ones that are really good that way. Oh, and for instance, like our jalapenos, sometimes we actually wait until these are red and pick them then. So that's really good too. Okay, so the next thing that I've started already, and I'm probably gonna start a few more of, are these, I think it's Ping Tung Eggplant. I'm probably gonna butcher the name of all of these things, but um, we've grown these for I think this is the third year now. I really like them. Um, I like growing them. I don't love eating eggplants. <laughs> I grow them again for Andrew. Um, but I think the plants are really pretty. And so I'll grow them just because I think the, the leaves and everything are just beautiful. And again, like he really likes these um, and puts them in a lot of, a lot of different stir fries and um, curries and things like that. And so, and occasionally he'll roast them, but I think he does, he puts them in like curries for the most part but this is his favorite one and so this is the one we grow and the next thing that i planted already were tomatoes and so i have a couple here we are diehard cherry tomatoes this was the first vegetable <laughs> that i ever grew in our very first very first garden you don't even really we don't even really call it a garden we grew um I think they were actually called super sweet 1000s, but we grew them in a pot and it was this huge pot that we had on a balcony because we didn't have any like yard or anything. We just had a little balcony in our apartment. And so we grew them in this pot. And I remember tasting this. We did a side by side with this and cherry tomatoes that we had bought from the grocery store. And I remember just feeling angry because <laughs> these dates, it's so different than the ones from the grocery store that I was actually upset about it. And so I didn't think that I liked any kind of tomatoes that much and cherry tomatoes. I was like, yeah, I'll eat them if they're in stuff, but I don't really like them. And then we grew some and it completely changed my mind about cherry tomatoes. And so we've grown these every single year since, but um, yeah, there's, that's those there. And then the next one, paste tomatoes. This year we did just two kinds. I've tried a bunch of different ones and um, we don't have a ton of room for tomatoes. And I also, 
want to do more um more pasta sauce this year because I the last couple years I've canned um a bunch of tomatoes that we bought from the farmer's market like a huge box and made um, pasta sauce out of them and I really love doing that and this is we're not going to be growing enough to do that we're still going to have to buy them from the farmer's market but I wanted to just work on getting better at growing paste tomatoes for that so this year we have two that I'm focusing on um, one is the Amish paste which we really like it's um, kind of like a thicker one it has a, a lot of meat on it which is really good for canning and um, sauces and stuff and then the other one that we're trying is the Roma and we really like this one too so these are both um, I think the Amish paste is actually indeterminate and then this one is the um, this Roma is it says bush on it so that's a determinate tomato and the difference between these two is indeterminate means there's an indetermined height that it'll grow to so we've grown these and they've gotten to like 10 feet tall and then these are supposed to get more like five feet tall six feet tall um, so they grow to a certain height all the fruit comes on them at once you harvest it all at once and um, then it's done so I'm testing this out we have a couple spaces outside of our beds where I can try and do rows of these without them blocking, uh, potentially, hopefully, is my plan, without them blocking sun from the beds or to the beds. And so I'm gonna try both of these in this, in this new configuration and see what I like. And then the last tomato that we're focusing on this year is this golden nugget. So last year, um, we put our garden in really, really late. It was basically like June when we put everything in, which was in the middle of our summer. It's, you know, over 100 degrees every day here in the summer. And so nothing did very well. But these did really, really well. They were the only tomato that really gave us anything. And they give us a ton of fruit. It was really good, um, really sweet. And so we're definitely sticking with these again. I also just think they're pretty. Like, I, I love the color on those. So we're going to do that again. Okay. And then the next thing that we, that I planted already are these purple tomatillos. I don't know if you can see that. So um, <laughs> we tried this last year on a whim. I'd never planted tomatillos before. Um, and we made the mistake of only planting one. And so it was this beautiful plant. It was doing super well. It had a ton of flowers. And we were just waiting and waiting and waiting and it never got any fruit because we learned in the middle of that that you actually need more than one plant so that they can cross pollinate each other so this year I planted four um, and hopefully that'll give me three plants that I can put together and they can kind of cross pollinate each other so that way I could just do two but if something happened to one of them then you kind of lose both of them so I am trying to hedge my bets and do three so we'll see how this goes this year the next thing is um, basil. And so we do a few different kinds of basil here. Um, the first main one is the Italian Genovese basil. So we plant a ton of this. Um, I love having this so that we can, one, make a ton of pesto. And I love giving my friends bags and bags, like grocery bags of basil every time they come over. So, um, this one's really great we always plant way too much and um, the plants get way bigger than we need but i kind of love that and then once it gets to a certain um, heat level here again because we have really hot summers they all kind of bolt and, and flower and the bees really love them and so i actually will leave them for the whole rest of the season just for the pollinators so i really like that um, we also are growing a bunch more of all these different kinds of basils than we normally do uh, for the cut flower bouquets and so I'm going to try that out as a kind of like a filler. The second basil we always do is um, this Genovese Red, what does it say? Genovese Red Freddy. <laughs> um, I always just call this purple basil. We've gotten it before and it was called opal basil and so it's just this like really beautiful deep dark color and I love the contrast in this when the garden is full and you have like all of the different shades of greens and stuff like that and then you have these these um 
like pops of this just like really interesting dark purple I love it same thing here so this one is um, Thai basil and so we grow that every year we don't use a ton of it for culinary pur purposes we do use a little bit because we do um, Andrew cooks a lot of Thai food but um, we mostly just think it's really pretty and it has these really beautiful purple flowers you can see there and so again I just grow a bunch of this just for the bees and I love the look of it I love how it looks on the edges of beds and things like that it's just a really pretty plant to me and this one also I'm growing more of to put in bouquets and then the last one so this one is lemon basil we tried to grow this one for the first time last year and um, because it was so hot when we planted everything it immediately bolted so I have no idea what this is like <laughs> I assume it's good people tell me it smells amazing um, I want to try and make lemon lemon basil tea out of this um, so Jess from Roots and Refuge who is just so inspiring to me I watch all of her stuff I've learned all, every, basically everything I know from her um, she has this video about making ba different basil teas and I'll link that below too but um, that's one I really wanted to try because I love lemon stuff and so I wanted to see if this one actually does have a really strong lemon taste when you make tea out of it so that'll be cool those are all the kind of like vegetable things that we've already planted and now I want to show you the flowers that I've already or not already planted already started and again I'm doing these in waves so I'm going to be starting more and more and more of them the first one is this um, marigolds we plant a lot of marigolds so this one is a colossus red gold bicolor and so I really like this one um, this is kind of like one of our our go-to's our tried and trues and they get like really big and wonderful and if you um, deadhead them so if you cut off all of the flowers that are shriveled up and dead then it just blooms so much more and so I love doing that the next marigold that we're doing that's actually new to me this year is this sun sunshine orange marigold and this one I'm actually growing for a friend so um, she asked me if I could grow marigolds so, uh, for her for Dia de los Muertos and so I was like well I'll give it a try I can't guarantee that you're gonna get flowers <laughs> but I will try and so um, I'm growing these for her to see how it does so I'm really excited about this one so the next category of flowers that I'm growing is zinnias so I'm obsessed with zinnias um, in our first real big garden well our first big garden which was our smaller garden before this one um, I did a zinnia patch and I absolutely I just like threw zinnia seeds in a corner because people said that they grow really well and um, I really wanted more flowers I didn't really know how to do it so I literally just threw them in the corner and they exploded and I loved them um, and so I'm doing that now more in this garden too where I just want zinnias everywhere um, I'm also growing them for the cut flower garden so here are a couple that I've done before so we've done these since I think this was one of the original packets that I did in our little garden before this one was these um, double cutting cabaret zinnias it's just a mix of different colors um, and they have kind of like the double petals on them which I really like and so I want just the riot of color on that one and then the next zinnia so this one I grew for the first time two years ago and it was the first like specialty zinnia that I had picked up and it was these Moulin Rouge zinnias and I loved these um, they were huge first of all the flowers some of them were like this big it was just amazing and so I love these I've grown them every year since and then this year because I'm doing the cut flower garden I picked up two more kind of like special color zinnias and so the first one was this giant purple which I mean it's purple so <laughs> I'm always gonna grow something purple and then the next one was um, these Senora zinnias and they're this really pretty I think it's gonna be kind of a bright pink so excited about those other flowers that I've started already um, these are junior yellow sunflowers I did these for the first time two years ago I didn't do them last year um, 
but they are really amazing. They grow just a couple feet tall. And so what it looked like in my beds was, you know, just, just over the edge of the raised bed, you had these really beautiful kind of good sized sunflowers and sunflowers are my favorite flower. And so I loved that I could have these little ones in the beds instead of just having the ones that, you know, are like eight feet tall. I love that I could just put these in corners and along rows and stuff like that. So I'm doing a lot of these this year. The next one is chamomile. And so I grew this one for the first time two years ago also in the old garden. And the thing about chamomile is um, I found out I don't really like <laughs> the chamomile tea. Um, I've always been kind of okay about chamomile tea. Um, and so I grew these, I got these like really beautiful, uh, full plants. They were massive. They had a ton of flowers on them and I tried to make tea. I didn't really like it, but the fragrance that these had in the garden was amazing. And just for the fragrance alone, I will grow these every single year. So it was like you walk around the corner into the garden and you're just hit with this like sense of calm. It was amazing. So I'm going to grow these just for that. Next one is sweet alyssum. So this one I grow for, uh, the mostly for ladybugs, really. Uh, we've always had aphid issues in our gardens. And so, uh, I'm trying to make as much of a habitat for ladybugs and beneficial insects as I can. So the cool thing about sweet alyssum is um, I put it in my bed and beds a couple years ago and it spreads really quickly. But the cool thing about it is it doesn't actually compete with other plants because its roots don't kind of invade other spaces. They just kind of go around. And so with this, you do want to be careful with your beds um, because it will spread a lot. And basically when you plant stuff, you're going to have to kind of pull some of it up. But this is a really cool plant. It's really pretty too, to just have like the little uh, white delicate flowers kind of like around the edge of your soil and all that kind of stuff. So it's really pretty. Um, and we're also going to put more of this kind of in the garden belt area where more things are just going to be perennial and staying there forever. And so sweet alyssum is a good one for ladybugs, I've heard. Next one is amaranth burgundy amaranth so this one I grew for the first time last year in this garden and I had no idea what this was gonna look like really I mean it says five to eight feet tall on this packet and um, they mean that <laughs> that that eight foot tall is real and so these became massive massive plants and I loved them um, what I want to do with these is I want I have this idea in my head of having these and really the really tall sunflowers kind of at the edges of my um, arch trellises to kind of do pops of colors at, at the end of all of the arch trellises. So I'm going to try to do that, but I really love these. I'm also going to grow them really close together so that I can do smaller ones to potentially use in cut flower bouquets. So I'm excited about that. I'm excited about everything really. Okay. Oh, and now, so these are three things that I started that I've never, these are three flowers I've never done before. I've never tried them before. The first one is a dahlia mix. So these are dahlia seeds. Normally people, when they buy dahlias, they buy the tubers. So it's kind of like a, it kind of looks like a potato, but it's a tuber that grows underground. And from what I understand, that is how you know you're going to get that exact plant that has produces those exact flowers. And if you take the flowers and save the seeds from the flowers, um, you're gonna kind of get a similar plant, but all of those seeds are a little bit different in there. And so this one is supposed to be kind of like a mix of a bunch of different colors. I'm really cool with that because I just wanna grow a lot of different ones. Dahlias are a flower I really love. It was one of the flowers that, the first flowers that we got when we had our little patio garden and we had a dahlia that lasted for a good long while that we got at a garden center. We had it right outside our window and we just looked at it all the time and the hummingbirds would visit and the bees would visit. And so I really love those. So I'm attempting to grow them from seeds just because I want to see what it's like. The next one is giant snapdragons. 
Um, never grown these before. I kind of avoided these before because people said that they were toxic to pets. Um, but we actually have our dog Remy. He's trained really well not to go into the beds and not to eat anything out of the beds. And so I feel like I feel safe doing this now um, that I can trust that he's not going to eat anything. And so I'm going to try these. These are for the cut flower garden also. And the next is these candy stripe cosmos you can see how very precise i am about opening these <laughs> but um i heard that cosmos are really good for cut flowers also and the bushes are kind of like cut and come again and so um this was the one that they had at the garden center near me so it's the one that i got okay so that's all the stuff that we're putting in the garden that i've started at least some of already and so now I want to go over the things that I haven't started yet um, that I plan on starting in the next like couple weeks or planning to start once the weather is warm enough where I can just directly put it outside. So we'll go in reverse, reverse order this time. I will do the flowers first and then the vegetables. The first thing I have is a bunch of sunflowers. So again, sunflowers are my favorite flower and we have a lot more space now. And I, because I wanted to do the cutting garden, um, I want to test out just growing more of cutting varieties. And so I did a little bit of research. I had some of these already, but I did some research also to see what might be good and also just kind of like got ones that I liked. <laughs> so here are those. This one is, I don't know what it is because I clearly tore the name off there, but it's this really pretty kind of like autumn colored sunflower that might be what they're called actually oh the back says red sun these are really pretty i've grown these before in our last garden i grew i think two of them because we just didn't have a lot of space and they grew really tall they were beautiful they lasted for a good while and then as sunflowers do once they started to die they look terrible <laughs> and so that's what they do and that's okay but these are kind of like a mixed color these are the autumn ones so the autumn beauty sunflowers so this is just like a, a mix of a bunch of different hues which i thought was really pretty so pick those up these are zohar i think that's how you say that i know someone named zohar so that's why that's my guess but um i really liked these because i thought that they had you know really pretty coloring on them and these are supposed to be pretty good for vases and things like that so we're gonna try that and then these are ones that i'm really excited about um dwarf teddy bear sunflowers so i've seen people grow these teddy bear sunflowers before and i think they're just like the weirdest prettiest thing um i like that some of them are so fuzzy that they don't even really have these kind of like center things and i just think they're fun so i was excited about those other flowers uh, that i haven't started yet and these i'm kind of on the fence about so the first one is this uh persian carpet zinnia these are really small zinnias. We tried to grow this the first year when I did a zinnia patch because I had this idea of having smaller ones kind of create a border. So smaller zinnias and then like marigolds create a border for the big zinnias. So you would have these layers. And um, there was a flaw in that because the big zinnias quickly just ate them and completely shadowed them out. You couldn't see them anymore. And so it was kind of like they weren't there. But um, we have some some smaller beds around the house where I might put these. So I thought that might be pretty. And then the other one is Echinacea. So I've heard this one is just really beneficial for, it has a lot of medicinal things, but I would just grow it really for pollinators because I don't know much about the medicinal stuff at this point. And so I'm just growing whatever I think is interesting and whatever I think is beneficial for, you know, bees and, th and birds and things like that. I might do that but again these two i'm kind of on the fence about it'll be kind of a if i have a good spot for them kind of deal okay so those are the flowers and then now going to the vegetable part of the garden that and these are the things that i haven't started yet so the first one is uh, burgundy okra so this one people actually say to start it a lot earlier and kind of like in the in the eggplant and pepper variety of things. But when I've started these, they sprouted so fast. And then when I've put them outside, they grown so fast. And so I figured I would just wait because they really like heat and it gets really hot here. 
So I figured I would just, you know, save myself the effort and wait because I think they're going to do well regardless. And I don't really need to spend the extra time babying them if they're going to do fine. And then the next thing is beans. So the main bean that we like growing are these Chinese noodle beans. Um, we eat a lot of these. We love these. They do really well in our climate. And I have not successfully done it yet, but I keep trying to do a noodle bean trellis. I want to have this trellis just full of them with them hanging down in the middle. I love the look of that. Again, Jess from Roots and Refuge got me on these. Um, but it was something we were eat we were like buying from the Asian grocery store anyway. So um, these are something that we eat a lot of. And again, they're the beans that just do the best for us anyway. And so I'll be planting a lot of these noodle beans. And then the next ones are bush beans. So these are the ones that I put down. They're the kind of the small squatty ones. So they don't climb up a trellis or anything like that. So I use these when I have basically like an extra spot in the garden that I don't really know what to do with, but I don't want to leave it empty. And so we have these trio bush beans, which is just three different colors. So it'll be like the green, yellow, and purple. And then we have these like weekend beans which are just like green bush bean or green yeah green bush beans okay cucumbers so for cucumbers i've tried <laughs> i've tried so many different cucumbers and granted i'm probably not starting them at the same at the right time at all um but they get really bitter really nasty um we had not successfully gotten like the pickling cucumbers or you know the uh the slicing cucumbers, we had not successfully gotten one that wasn't awful when you bit into it. And so last year we decided to get these Armenian cucumbers, which are, I think technically a melon. Um, but I heard that these do really well in hotter climates. And so we tried these last year and they actually did really well. They tasted just like cucumbers to us. And it was great because they never got bitter, which was amazing. So doing these again. There's another one that I have in here. I think it's a silver slicer, um, but I have to figure out if I actually planted all of those last year or not, because I don't see them. The next thing is, um, is zucchini. So basically summer squash. And so the first thing we do, we do this every year is the just regular zucchini. And I'll do a couple of these plants. We'll be overrun with zucchini and freezing it and giving them to people and all sorts of stuff with just a couple plants. And then this is one I tried for the first time last year. It did okay, but again, everything kind of didn't really count last year because it was just too hot and too late. But it was these um, yellow squash. This one's called Max's Gold. And um, we got a couple off of the plants and uh, they were good. Tastes like yellow squash. Um, eventually they got just really overridden by aphids and so we just didn't have them for very long but this year we'll be planting those in the correct the correct time. So the next thing is our winter squash. So I think a thing that was really confusing to me when I first started gardening was summer squash versus winter squash. I didn't know the difference because when you look at the seed packets, it says to start them at the same time. And that was really confusing to me because I thought the summer ones grew in summer and the winter ones you were supposed to grow over winter. Um, but basically what that is, is both of these, you do start them at the same time. So the growing season is the same. So they all grow over like spring and summer, depending on when you start them. So that's for for summer squash and winter squash, you start them at this basically in the same season. They grow in the same season. And then what is different about them is that basically their maturity times. So when you look at a zucchini packet, this one says 55 days to maturity. So that's basically from the time that you plant it, it'll take 55 days until you start getting a zucchini, which is great. And then when you look at these, they're like 90 days to maturity this one is 110 days to maturity that kind of thing so basically it's just it takes that much longer for the winter squash to become the point where people are like used to eating it basically and so the it takes that longer time for it to change color for the skin to 
to um, harden, all that kind of stuff. And the reason it's called winter squash is because typically people store them over the winter. And so you would still, you know, like if you go to a pumpkin patch, they're all falling off the, the vines in fall, right? And so you pick that pumpkin up, you take it home. And what you could do is you could store that pumpkin all throughout the winter because of the, the hardness in the skin. So that's the difference between summer squash and winter squash. That was confusing to me when I started. So I wanted to, to see if that would be helpful to anybody else. For our winter squash, um, one of the ones that we do every year that we really like is called honey nut. So these are really small. They're basically like really small butternut squashes, um, but they taste sweeter and you can grow them on a trellis. And that's really why we got them is because they're so small, they grow really well on a trellis and we didn't have a ton of space. And I actually really like the look of them on a trellis. So we'll be doing that again. The next one um, that I'll be doing is a sugar pie pumpkin. So these we also grow on trellises. I have this dream of being able to <laughs> only use pumpkins I grow to decorate my house for Halloween or for the, for the fall basically. And then also I get these because once that season's over, um, I will cook them, uh, get out all of the, the good stuff and I'll use it to make like pumpkin pie and stuff like that. And then what I do too is I'll actually, the stuff I don't end up using that year, I freeze it and I just use it to make pumpkin pie the next year. So it's really great. And then the last one, we have this mix. So in this mix, it's two different ones. It's butternut and delicata squash. I only use the butternut. And so they're in this thing, they're like two different colors. One is I think green so that you can tell them which seed is which. And um, this is just a seed packet. I don't even know where I got this. Um, I, someone might have given it to me, but we got those this years and years ago. And so I'm slowly using it up. Are we done? Okay, I think we're done. Okay, so those are all the things that have gro we're growing in our garden this year. Um, I always add a few things. I always change my mind on a few things. So no, this is really set in stone, um, but this kind of is an overview of what I like to grow, what uh, I'm really excited about in this garden this year. It's a lot of new stuff for me. It's a lot of stuff that I've tried before, but I haven't been really, really successful with it. And so it feels new still. <laughs> and so I'm really excited. But anyway, I hope this is um, beneficial for you. Again, I will put, you know, my favorite seed companies, all that kind of stuff in the description box below so that you can check those out. It's really just kind of like we order a few online, but it's kind of like when we go to the garden store, I can't help but go by the, the seed aisles and pick something new. So it's a fun way to, to garden. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. If you stuck around this long, thank you so much for geeking out with me and I will see you on the next one. Take care.